So in this video I'll be showing you how I made both of these necklaces using just about the same techniques and how to set your stones into these two different kinds of bezels. But first I need to tell you about the two companies that supplied me with tools to make this video possible. So thank you metalsmithingtools.com for supplying me with the pitch that I use in this video, and I'll talk about that more later. And thank you AutoFry for supplying me with a majority of the tools I used in this video. And check them out at autofry.com, and if you want to save a little bit of money on your order, I'll have a discount code in my description, and on my website. Alright, so let's get into the video. So this is a piece of Labradorite, which happens to be a really popular stone right now and one that I actually really like because of how it looks. At first the stone might look pretty plain, but if you have the light hit it at the right angle, you can see that it has a nice blue look to it that it almost looks like it's glowing. These two in particular are kind of hard to get on camera. You can also get these in larger cuts like this one. They also come in a variety of different colors. Well, the first step you're going to need to do is actually make a bezel for these. The first wire I'm going to use for the bezel is a just standard bezel wire made from fine silver. When making bezels like this, you're going to want to make sure that the bezel wire you're using, or whatever material it happens to be, is not too tall or too short. So I made this picture to illustrate what I'm talking about exactly. So as you can see on the left hand side how the bezel comes up just above where the cabochon or stone starts to curve, that's your idea place for your bezel. If it's too high you'll have too much leftover metal that you need to bend down, or if it's too low it just can't grab onto anything and the stone will just fall out. And if you'd like to keep this picture as a reference just head over to my website and just go to my blog and I'll have that image up there so you can save it to your computer or your phone. So to make your bezel fit your stone, all you need to do is just wrap it around your stone. And as you're doing this, make sure it's as tight as possible with no gaps around the stone. And you're going to want to go until the bezel wire overlaps with itself. So once you have it to your liking, you're going to want to mark it where it overlapped, and then cut it. So to cut this, I'm just going to use some metal shears. Seeing that this is really thin and fine silver, you don't really want to use a jeweler saw on it. I'm also going to be leaving about 2 millimeters of extra material on this. This is because I'm going to use a miter cutting vise to make sure that everything is perfectly straight so when we solder it, everything goes together fine. And if you don't happen to have one of these tools, you can get away with just cutting it as straight as possible and then using a file and your bench pin to straighten it out if needed. So now that it's all cut to length, we need to make sure that both sides are as square as possible with one another. So when we solder it, there's no gaps. So I'm just going to straighten it back out and put it into my vise. The vise has this little notch on it that will line up with your flat edge of your metal and you can use that to make sure that everything is going to be square. So once I have everything in place and square, I'll tighten down the vise. Then I can lay it down onto my work area and then just use a hand file to file it down so it's flush with the vise. Once you can run your finger over that area without it snagging or feeling any difference in the material, then you should be good with that side and then you can flip it over and do it to the other side. And this might also leave a slight burr on your bezel wire, so you'll have to take that off later. So the other bezel will be made from using gallery wire, that happens to be a crown shape. So this bezel will be made exactly the same way the last one was made. Besides, this is made from sterling silver, so it's a little bit harder to bend. So this style of bezel is pretty common, and I find it way easier to set than a just plain normal bezel like the last one. And I'll be showing you that near the end of this video. It also adds a lot of detail to your piece for the same amount of work that you'd be doing on just a flat bezel. Just like before, I'm just going to mark where it overlays, and then I'm going to cut it out using my metal shears. And then just square up both of the ends on the vise. And when doing this, it actually left a really big burr that I just took off with some normal wire cutters. 
Once you have all that done and before soldering it, make sure to test fit it around your stone. This way you can make sure it actually fits before you solder it together and then have to cut it apart and remeasure everything. And as you can see, this bezel is a little too big, so I'm going to cut it down and fix that before soldering. As for the other bezel, it looks like it fits perfectly. So soldering this is pretty straightforward, you just need to get both ends as close as possible and as straight as possible so you will have no gaps and a very strong solder joint. An easy way to do this is to bend one side over the other like this. Then all you need to do is flatten that side out and pull the pieces back apart just until the two ends meet. Once you have it to that point, you're going to want to make sure that everything is aligned and there's no gaps. Now I'm going to use my third hand to hold this with the solder joint pointing down. And then just put a little bit of flux onto the solder joint and add a piece of hard silver solder. So now we just need to heat the piece to make the solder flow. And be very careful because you can melt this really easily because of how thin it is. So just try to make sure that you heat this piece up pretty slow because your flux will start to boil and then it could push your little piece of solder off. If you don't want to deal with this or don't want to worry about it, just flux the piece first, heat the piece until the flux turns white, and then place your solder piece on the solder joint area. Once that's done, you go ahead and quench it in some water to cool it down, and then you do the same exact thing to the other bezel. And once these are both done, they need to be cleaned inside of your pickling solution. So I'm going to throw them inside of my pickle pot and let them clean themselves. As we're waiting for that, I'm going to show you how to make some silver balls using some 16 gauge round wire and this tube cutter. So I'm going to set the tube cutter to 5 millimeters. This will make it so I can cut 5 millimeter pieces of wire every time without having to remeasure. And this will keep the ball sizes consistent so you don't have to guess on how much material to use. So to use this tool, all you need to do is put your wire into it and then flip the lever over the top to hold it in place. And now we can start cutting the wire. So to do this, I'll be using a bench pin to support the piece so it doesn't wiggle around. And you'll need to use a jeweler saw to cut through the piece. And there'll be a little slot on it so you can do this. And make sure that your blade is actually set in your saw or you're not going to be cutting anything. So when doing this, you can easily lose the freshly cut pieces. So make sure you do it over something that can catch them or just be very careful when removing your saw blade so that it doesn't just shoot out. Because when it comes to my work area and I drop something on the floor, it's pretty much gone forever or until I sweep. And then I'm just going to continue to make a couple more of these. So now I'm going to turn these pieces of wire into silver balls. To do this, I'm going to put them on top of a charcoal block and I'm going to coat them in flux. So then I'm just going to use my Smith's little torch to heat them up from one side and it should start to melt and beat up and as soon as it turns into a ball you can remove the heat and then they will become solid balls of whatever metal you're using. Just be careful because these can jump off of your charcoal block and land on something that is not heat resistant and cause burns or even fire. Also keep in mind that if these cool down too much, you cannot get them off with the charcoal block and you'll have to heat them up again. So just make sure you do that if you go through and make a bunch of them at once. So you can use this same technique with silver, copper, brass, and gold. Just be very careful when you do it with brass. So the reason for this is brass is made up of copper and zinc. So zinc's boiling point is a little bit higher than the melting point of copper. So if you let it go for too long and put too much heat onto it, the whole thing will explode from the gases. Here's the explosion slowed down. Once you have all your metal balls, you're going to need to clean them off in the pickling solution. A good way to do this is to take a paper towel or a coffee filter and throw them all inside of it and then close up the top so they don't get out because fishing these out of your pickling solution takes forever. So 
So now that they're all clean from the pickling solution, we can start shaping them around our stones. The reason why I had to do this is because I had to flatten one edge and misshapen these. And if we want our stones to actually fit in these when we solder them, we have to do this. I'll also be able to see if they're actually the right size and if I need to cut them down and redo them or if I need to make complete new ones because they're too small. And I'd much rather do that now than after I've soldered everything together and have to scrap the entire piece. And luckily both of them fit. And to make sure my bevels are completely even and flat, I'm going to use some 220 grit sandpaper and just sand down the top and bottom of the basic bezel and then just the bottom of the one that's made from the gallery wire. So for the back of this, I'm going to be using a piece of sheet metal that I made a long time ago. And I'm just going to sand it down to make sure that it's completely flat and there's no weird bumps or anything on it. If you'd like to see how I make my own sheet metal and my own wire, let me know and I'll make a video about it. And the last parts I'm going to need are a couple of jump rings. I'll be using 16 gauge round wire to make some 4 millimeter jump rings and some 2 millimeter jump rings. For the 2 millimeter jump rings, I'm going to use some pliers and flatten them out because I'm going to be soldering them shut with some hard solder. Now that all the parts are done, I could assemble everything and start soldering. Make sure that you flux everything so the solder will flow between all the pieces. So to put everything together, I'll be using medium solder. And for a bezel about this size, I will only be using four pieces, one on the top, one on the bottom, and one on either side. As for the pieces on the outside of the bezel, I'll be using a total of four pieces of medium solder also. Just make sure to put the pieces of solder as close as possible to all the pieces on the outside and make sure the solder is actually touching each one of them too. So it's finally time to start soldering everything together. I'm going to be using my tripod setup with my mesh screen so I can heat the piece from underneath. I like to solder pieces like this because I feel like I have better control over the heat and it also helps protect against melting tiny pieces that are on the top, like the bezel wire or the gallery wire. When heating the piece, make sure to keep moving and don't stay in one spot for too long because you will melt this. Make sure you have a solder pick or some tweezers handy, just in case if anything moves, so you can move it back. Just keep evenly heating your piece until you see your flux start to turn clear or glassy. Once you see that, that means the solder is about to flow. Once you see your solder actually start to flow, make sure to concentrate your flame on those areas for a little bit longer just so everything will flow properly and everything will connect. If you have to, move the torch on top of the piece and just touch up little areas that your solder didn't flow from or you would like it to flow to. Just be very careful when doing this because you can melt the little parts of your piece and you'll have to scrap it and start over. And when soldering something like this for the very first time, I suggest having none of the extra parts and just learn how to do the bezel itself. You should have absolutely no gaps between the back plate and the bezel. One interesting way to find out if everything is all attached is you can heat your piece from underneath and if everything glows in a uniform manner and there's no dark spots on certain pieces or anything like that or weird color differences, then the chances are that everything is all soldered together in one piece. Even with this check in place, you're going to want to check every piece of this after it cools down to make sure nothing pops off. And if it does, you will have to pickle the piece and resolder that piece back on. So I'm going to take that piece and put it onto my charcoal block so it can cool down. You don't really want to quench things like this right away because you can actually warp them and it could mess up your stone setting. And for the second piece, I'm just going to do exactly what I did for the last one. And the reason why I'm making two of these and basically doing the same thing twice is to show that you can make a very detailed looking piece using a gallery wire and it actually takes less work than using the plain bezel wire and you'll see this when it comes to setting how much easier the gallery wire is going to be versus what I have to do to the plain bezel wire to make it look nice. So once both pieces are cooled down enough, I put them both into water to make sure that they're completely cool. And then I'm going to check every single piece on them to make sure nothing pops off. And to do this, I just use a pair of sharp pliers and just try to pick off every piece. Also, I look around the bezel to make sure that there's no gaps. Thank you. 
And so right here, after checking, the ball right here is not attached. So I'm going to have to go through and clean this piece and resolder this. So once I've soldered that ball back on and cleaned both pieces, it's time to start cutting them out. The first thing I'm going to do is drill a hole inside of the jump ring. This way I can cut away the backing material from there, and I'll be able to put another jump ring through this so I can actually make this into a necklace. Once you have a hole there, you can use a jeweler saw to cut out the rest of the hole, or you can use a drill bit if you happen to have one in the right size. And a lot of people also cut out the material behind your stone so light can come through it, but with this particular stone, I don't like how it comes out so I leave it completely closed off. So once I have that cut out, I'm going to cut out the entire piece from the backing. Basically, you're just going to trace around all of the stuff on the outside, and try not to hit anything with the saw because it'll leave marks. If you're not familiar with using a jeweler saw, then I suggest watching my video that shows just about everything you need to know and how you can practice. And I'll make sure to leave a link to that video for you. So once I had the whole thing cut out, I wanted to see the stone in it. But before I placed the stone in there, I put a piece of thread down, or you could use dental floss. This way, I can actually pull the stone back out. If you don't do this, or have a hole in the backing, it's going to be very difficult to get the stone out of the piece, or it will just be stuck and you'll have to finish this piece with the stone like that. So I'm just going to repeat the same process for the other one, and I'll just have the camera zoomed in a little bit more so you can see how I cut it out a little bit better. So I didn't cut flush with the entire piece, so I'm going to have to go back over it with some diamond bits and grind it down so everything becomes flush. And then I'm going to use some rubber diamond bit to clean it up and polish it a little bit more. When you're doing this part, make sure that you have a dust mask and some goggles on because you probably don't want any of this in your eyes or your lungs. So you remember those 4mm jump rings that I made earlier. Well now it's time to actually put them on. So when you put these jump rings on, you can just close them up using your pliers and call it done. But I like to close all my jump rings completely. But I don't like using solder to do so, which you can do. I actually try to fuse all of mine using my torch. So to fuse these jump rings, I have to use my number three torch end on my little torch. And I just flux the piece and then melt the two pieces together while keeping everything in a perfect circle. Which took me a lot of practice and a lot of failed parts. I actually have a very short video showing how I do this. But like I said, you don't have to fuse your rings together. You can use solder or you can just leave them alone. I do like to try to close the majority of my jump rings when I can. This way, if there's force on the piece, it, they can't open up and you won't be losing a piece or breaking anything. So to set our stones, I'm going to be using some pitch to hold our pieces. And this pitch was supplied to me by MetalSmithingTools.com. And they also have a YouTube channel by the same name. 
that happens to have a video showing how to chase a piece using the pitch in a pitch bowl. So I suggest checking them out. So my pitch and my bowl are not completely set up and I need to melt my pitch into it. So I'm going to fill it up with some pitch and then use a heat gun to melt it down and continue this process until it's completely level all the way across. So this particular pitch is actually made from sap from certain types of trees and is completely natural. But even with that said, you need to take it outside if you don't have a very well ventilated area because I actually set off my smoke alarms. I do find it a little funny that this just looks like chocolate being melted down inside of a bowl. Now that the pitch is completely cooled down and hardened, we can start using it to set our stone into our bezel. So to use it, all I need to do is heat up the area where I want to be placing my bezel, and then just push my bezel into it. And then once it's in place, I'm just going to build up a little bit around it so it holds it better, and then we can get started on actually setting our stone. So first things first, put your stone inside of your bezel, and this time without the string or dental floss, because it's not going to be coming out again. So now you're just going to want to bend the bezel over your stone. And I suggest starting on one side and then going to the opposite side of wherever you started and keep working your way around like that. As you can tell, I'm using a piece of dowel to do this, which is probably one of the cheapest tools you can get your hands on. Also, when bending everything in, make sure not to make any type of weird crease or pinch because that could actually ruin your bezel. For instance, right here, I almost do just that. So because those two pieces bent how they did, I can no longer move it with my piece of wood. So I'm going to be using a bezel rocker, and this should be able to flatten it down. And then I'm just going to continue my way around the bezel. The bezel is going to look pretty bad at first because it's going to have all these weird gaps and all these will be flattened out and fixed, but you have to make it look bad before you make it look good. So you don't have to be using pitch to do this. It just makes it a lot easier. And there's a bunch of other tools that will hold your piece too that make it a lot easier. But if you really need to, you can just use a flat surface in your hand to do this. So now that I have everything down as much as I can get it with my dowel, I'm going to use a bezel rocker to flatten everything out. So setting bezels like this takes a lot of force. So depending on what stone you're using, and if it has weak points, you can actually crack your stone. So keep that in mind when you're doing this. It won't happen to every stone, but certain ones you can actually put too much pressure and crack them. As you're setting everything, you're going to want to make sure that your stone is as fixed in place as possible. So no wiggling whatsoever. I have seen people that would glue the stone to the back plate and then set the bezel around it so they don't have to worry about it wiggling around, but I don't like to use adhesives as much as possible, so I'm just going to be doing it this way. At one point I was pushing so hard that I actually sunk this piece way too far into the pitch where I couldn't actually work on it anymore, so I had to take it out and reheat another area and reset it. So now I'm going to be using my burnishing tool on the edge of the bezel. So since the bezel is made from fine silver, using the burnisher and rubbing it around the edges will actually flatten it out and make it pretty much perfect with the stone. So this does take a lot of practice and quite a bit of time to get right, and I'll be the first one to admit that I'm not the best at doing this, but I can make my bezels look very nice. And there we go, this one is pretty much done. I just need to clean up a little bit more and then I'm gonna move on to the next piece. So I'm just gonna heat up an area just like I did last time and submerge this into it. And then the whole setting process for this one is a lot easier and I'll show you why. So just place your stone inside of the bezel and make sure that it's sitting completely flat. Now all I need to do is take my dowel and bend the crown tips down onto the stone. And when doing this, you just want them to be as tight as possible up against the stone and make sure that the stone isn't wiggling. And that's why this bezel is so much easier. You're working with little individual pieces that have a lot of leeway when you bend them down versus a piece that is all one continuous piece of metal that you need to bend and shape and make sure that there's no curves or anything in it. Once they're as tight as I can get them with my dowel, I'll go over it with my burnisher. Basically, I'll just rub it over each one of these to make sure that they're as tight as possible because I don't want these to snag on anything. 
So that's about it for setting both of these bezels. As you can tell, the gallery wire, like I said, is way easier than doing just normal bezel wire. But it looks way more detailed, and people seem to like it more. So anyways, I'm just going to polish both of these up using my polishing compound and a polishing tool, and then show what they look like all finished. So if you found this video helpful at all, please feel free to leave a like. If you happen to have any questions or suggestions, leave a comment. And if you'd like to be updated on when I post new videos, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. I try to make new videos like this every week. Well, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.